Our landscape is coming alive, and it's not just the fields, flowers, and gardens, but also fawn, young ducks, geese, and rabbits. But biologists have some advice, and joining us today to talk a little bit about this is Doug Lear with the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. Thanks for coming in. You're welcome. They are so cute, and we're seeing so many more baby animals around in town. But you have some advice for people. Really, the fundamental advice, <laughs> whether it's a deer, whether it's a rabbit, whether it's a duckling, a gosling, uh, young pheasants, any out in the country, in town, wherever you see young wildlife, our response, our suggestion, our request is just to leave them be, to let them sit there, give them some space, leave them alone. Is really, is really what it comes down to. In just about any situation, it's hard to find any kind of situation where we would advise people to to pick up or to to touch any young wildlife, Lisa. Well, usually we think they're abandoned. They're all by themselves, but that's not always the case. No, it isn't, especially taking the case like a, a young fawn where they are born scent free and the mom will actually hide them in the grass and stay far away from them so that her scent doesn't draw in coyotes or other predators. So it may look like an abandoned young deer, but in fact, the mom is not too far away actually watching and she'll come back and she'll nurse and then she'll leave again. And in the same situation with like baby ducklings, any kind of baby gosling, baby duckling, their best chance of survival is in the wild. And the, the reality of it is they may have eight ducklings, 10 ducklings, but they may not a year from now all survive. That's why they have that many, because there might only be one or two that survive. So the best advice that we can give to people in just about any situation is to, to leave them alone, Lisa. And Mama Goose doesn't always like it when you get too close to. Some of the mamas are a little They're bit They're very, very <laughs> protective. They're very yeah. protective. And the young, they don't want to be picked up and taken. Okay, if there's, if there's one situation, would be if you find one on your doorstep or somebody does pick one up and bring it to you, then take it and put it back into the natural habitat. Take it and put it back where, down by the river, down by some water or something like that. That would be the one situation where you might be advised to. Okay, and that one situation, because we should also point out, you don't want to be touching them as well because you don't really know if they could be carrying different disease or ticks or different bugs that are that's a really fine good for point. them, not that's us. A, that's a, a very good point. There might be some kind of a virus or a disease or a tick or a flea or something that you would be bringing onto yourself or bringing into your house. So really when you come down through it and you talk about all those different situations, it's best for you and it's best for the wildlife just to leave them alone, to leave them in the wildly so. Good reminder. Uh, sometimes hard to do because everybody, there's, there's trying to be helpful in most cases, but. Right, and that, that our intention is to try to help, but in fact, they really don't want or need our help, Lisa. Doug Lear with the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. Thanks for coming in today. You're welcome.